Our next question comes from Richard. Can addresses be determined to belong to the same wallet? Is there a way to determine if addresses be belong to the same wallet, such as in a hierarchical deterministic wallet that can generate multiple addresses? Can you figure out that these belong to the same mnemonic, to the same seed? Uh, only if you have the seed. So if those addresses are correctly generated, meaning that they have been derived from a hardened uh, child uh, address, which is how uh, BIP43 and BIP44 produce addresses, how most of the standard wallets you uh, use produce the addresses from a hardened child, um, then in fact, uh, it is not possible to determine um, that two addresses belong to the same seed, or have been generated from the same seed, without being able to capture that seed. I mean, if you have the seed, then you can generate all the addresses, and therefore you can see that the two addresses were generated from that seed. But without the seed, if you're just observing transactions going by, and you see two addresses, you can't determine that those addresses were generated from the same seed. However, you can determine that they're being used by the same user through statistical analysis. So, uh, for example, if two addresses are used to provide inputs for a single payment, um, thereby connecting their use together, signing both of them in the same transaction, in a transaction that looks like a wallet produced it, uh, and it's not a coin join, then through statistical analysis, um, some people can determine uh, to some degree of confidence that those two addresses are probably being managed by the same wallet and belong to the same person. Uh, but again, that's a statistical thing. It's not certain, and um, and that's a weakness that exists with um, keys that are generated um, from different. Sorry, addresses that are generated from different keys, not necessarily the same seed. Anthony asks. I want to be able to monitor and deposit to my hardware wallet using a watch-only wallet app, like Sentinel, made by Samurai Wallet. While I'm fine using a wallet app as a hot wallet, I'm concerned that the app developer would be privy to my cold storage wallet addresses and balances if I track my hardware wallet this way. Should I be concerned about exposing my privacy in this way, and are there better ways to keep tabs on my cold storage for better privacy? This is a great question, Anthony. This is a challenge, and I, I find myself struggling with this question often, which is, how much do I want to really know about my cold storage on a regular basis? I've gone back and forth on this over the years and tried to figure out better solutions to this. I honestly don't want to have uh, a watch-only wallet that watches all of my cold storage. And the reason I don't want to have that is because it becomes a very, very big vulnerability. It becomes a vulnerability for privacy in general, because uh, your watch-only wallets, and I'm not going to criticize Sentinel specifically. I don't know how it works, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can use your own node and protect your privacy and change settings in ways that make it better. But in general, as a general concept, one of the risks you have to consider is this. You take uh, an extended public key, or XPUB, as it's known, an export from your uh, cold storage, for your hardware wallet, and you bring that XPUB online, and you put it in something that can watch the addresses that it can generate. Now, you don't have a risk of theft, because the XPUB doesn't allow you to spend. It's not private keys, it's just public keys. Um, but what happens is, as the XPUB, perhaps only on your local machine or your smartphone, generates addresses, it's going to need to check the balance. And there you have the traditional problem of using any kind of lightweight wallet or SPV wallet, uh, simplified payment verification, or essentially using other people's servers to confirm the balance of your addresses, which is that either using Bloom filters, or queries, or perhaps a more sophisticated mechanism, your wallet is going to ask their servers how much money is in this address. Now, depending on um, how that is done, what protocol is used, there are a number of risks. One, um, if it is not properly encrypted, then anybody watching the connection between the two of you can see all of the addresses that you are um, asking about. That is bad. Um, Two, anybody who's compromised their servers, compromised their network, um, or is uh, or has compromised their operations, 
can uh, now watch which addresses you are asking about. And Bloom filters can obfuscate that a tiny bit, but not enough. Um, so people can draw conclusions about how much you have in cold storage, what addresses it is stored in, what addresses you are interested in, all of which has a privacy cost. Um, you can tighten that up. You can use applications that allow you to use your own full nodes to run all of the queries, and then you can route all of that over Tor uh, if you have a node that supports Tor, and that's going to give you a much higher degree of privacy. Um, one way to do that, and one piece of software that's interesting, is the Electrum Personal Server. Um, an Electrum personal server is basically something you run on top of your full node, and you have it index all of the addresses that you are interested in for your cold storage. And then you can connect an Electrum wallet uh, and have it only talk to that Electrum personal server that is on your own node, and be able to do a watch-only wallet that is relatively secure. It still has some weaknesses. From what I understand, that is exactly what Samurai is trying to do with Sentinel. Uh, in terms of allowing you to configure it to only work with your own node and having that extra degree of privacy. There is another way. Uh, the other way is to generate 10 or 15 addresses, or however many you think you will need throughout the year, um, as receive addresses on your hardware wallet, and then export only those and keep them in some format that is relatively secure, preferably offline. Uh, you could, for example, print out a number of addresses with QR codes um, on a piece of paper and carry that with you. And that has some privacy implications. Once you put money in those uh, in those uh, addresses, I would probably destroy um, any copies you carry with you uh, that have addresses you've already used. And that way, the addresses you have. Uh, if someone sees that piece of paper, or you are interrogated by someone, or whatever, uh, they are going to see addresses that have no money in them. and They won't be able to see any of your other cold storage, because you don't have any other copies of XPUBs or anything like that. All you have is a few receive addresses you have printed in advance. Now, this is clunky, and it is difficult to use, operationally complicated, um, but it does give you a way to be able to take payments directly into cold storage without having privacy revealing uh, data on you. Um, so that's another thing you you can do. And you can also uh, just you know um, only use your cold storage very rarely, uh, make deposits to a few addresses you keep, and never access a watch only. so you don't actually ever know how much is in your cold storage. If you don't even remember how much is in your cold storage, you're more likely to hodl. Uh, so you're not tempted. I don't know. Uh, this is a difficult one. It's the careful balance between privacy and security, um, and I don't know that I have a great solution for it. Great question, though. Question from Guy: What is the current state of CoinJoin? Um, so, Guy, CoinJoin isn't a product. Uh, it's actually um, a protocol uh, for creating transactions that have multiple participants. And there are a number of different ways to implement CoinJoin, and many of those implementations have been implemented as services or uh, products that allow people to, to, to basically create CoinJoin transactions um, with different types of software. So there are a number of implementations out there. I haven't reviewed, vetted, or understood the technology within them, but there are a number of uh, wallets that allow you to use various forms of CoinJoin. Um, so Samurai is one wallet that has some capabilities that are similar, uh, or the, the use a CoinJoin-like protocol. Um, and there is Wasabi Wallet, which is a desktop implementation that has an implementation of CoinJoin in it. Um, and there is one more that I can't remember, uh, which is a client-server application that you run, or a P2P application that you run um, on your desktop again. Uh, oh yeah, it's called Tumblebit, which does a CoinJoin implementation. So all of those uh, are implementations. The current state of CoinJoin is. CoinJoin is somewhat successful at providing privacy because it allows you to obfuscate the ownership of inputs and outputs within a transaction. But 
Uh, its fundamental weakness is that unless all of the participants are doing the same amount of payment, um, by looking at the amounts that are going in and the amounts that are going out in the transaction, you can do statistical analysis in order to correlate payments. Uh, and you can follow that through multiple rounds of coin join. So the ability to de-anonymize payments by doing statistical analysis is the problem with coin join. Mm, how do you solve that problem? You solve that problem by encrypting the amounts, uh, and that's called confidential transactions. And the same person who invented coin join invented confidential transactions or co-invented confidential transactions. And that's uh, Gregory Maxwell, who is one of the core developers. He was the original person to propose CoinJoin. And, and then seeing some of the weaknesses that occurred due to statistical analysis, created this essentially zero-knowledge proof based system called confidential transactions that allows you to encrypt the values of uh, inputs and outputs in a transaction uh, in such a way that you can still verify that they add up meaning that you haven't spent more than you have or created coins out of thin air um, by using a range proof. And we've actually had some development in that space with a new technology that makes those range proofs more compact. That technology is called bulletproof, uh, with contributions from Greg Maxwell and others again. Um, and uh, all together, CoinJoin, confidential transactions, bulletproofs could come together with Schnorr signatures to produce a very highly uh, private uh, very fungible Bitcoin in the future, but that would require a series of soft fork changes um, to the Bitcoin transaction.